In this video, I'm going to show you how to grow mushrooms in jars at home. This video will serve as an overview of the process, but some of the more detailed steps such as making grain spawn and pasteurizing substrate I've covered in other videos. Growing mushrooms in jars can be a fun way to understand and learn about the mushroom growing process. However, unless you're doing it on a larger scale or using supplementation, you might find the yields somewhat underwhelming. First thing you're going to want to do is create some grain spawn. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to do that here because I've got other videos which cover this in full, but this is just me inside the still air box making some grain spawn with liquid culture. So this is the jar when it's 100% colonized. Just ignore the staining, that's perfectly normal for freckled chestnut. This is a jar of King Oyster Mushroom, that's 100% colonized. Here you can see how the King Oyster Mushroom is actually pinning and beginning to fruit inside of the jar. So I'm not going to use this because it's over colonized, but it just goes to show King Oyster Mushrooms are great for growing in jars. And this is a Pio Pino grain spawn jar that I've got and you can just see this is an example of a jar I wouldn't use because this grain here is not colonizing properly so it, it's possibly contaminated. I recommend using aspen bedding or straw as the substrate for growing mushrooms in jars. It's best to avoid hardwood fuel pellets or sawdust as they can form a dense brick-like mass that's hard to clean out after the mushrooms have grown. The process I follow is first to hydrate the substrate, then thoroughly drain it and finally pasteurize it for 60 minutes. Yeah, I'm just wiping off excess moisture from inside of the container before I pasteurize it. You can see at the bottom it's a little bit wet, but I'm not too worried about that because I'll just squeeze the excess moisture out of the bottom when it comes to spawning. This is the procedure I use when mixing the grain spawn and substrate together. I take the jars which I'm going to be growing the mushrooms in and then I run them in the dishwasher on a short cycle. I take them straight out and then I wipe them down with alcohol. I break up the grain spawn jars by banging them against a soft surface. This means that they're easier to pull out when it comes to working with them. So next I take a handful of the pasteurized substrate, give it a squeeze and then place it into the jar. And then I just layer with substrate, then grain spawn, then substrate, then grain spawn. Also, when you use your grain spawn, don't use one jar of grain spawn across two different substrate jars. You want to use one to one. If there's still grain spawn left over in the jar, don't then go and pour it into the next substrate jar. You just want to put it to the side and then open a new jar. <laughs> 
because if there's contamination in that jar and you then go and pour the one jar into four substrate jars, you're just going to contaminate all four jars. So you want to kind of do one jar per substrate and then that means that if one of the jars is contaminated and you haven't realized, you haven't spread it across all of your jars, you just spread it across one jar and then your other jars should be safe. You want to make sure that the substrate comes above any lips or grooves in the jar. If you do what I do here and then leave the substrate below the grooves, there's a high probability that your mushrooms will side pin or get caught on the grooves and they'll not fruit out the top of the jar. You can see in this clip here how I have absolutely loads of mushrooms growing underneath the groove and they aren't growing as well as they could if the top of the substrate was above that groove. All of their mushrooms would be fruiting out of the top of the jar. When you finish filling the jar, just wipe any excess substrate off the rim and off the edges, do that the best you can, and then put the lid on the jar and just put it to the side. When I get to the bottom of the substrate, I start to really squeeze the substrate hard because as I said earlier, the bottom of the substrate is quite wet. So give it a good squeeze or don't use it at all and then move on to the next batch of substrate if you've got enough. Put your jars into incubation conditions and they should be colonized within about 14 days but it's dependent on what kind of mushrooms you're growing. What you're looking out for on your jars is if there's any areas like this where the mycelium hasn't completely taken over the substrate. So for example you can see on this corner here the mycelium is not growing through that area which means it's likely contaminated. So if that happens don't bother trying to fruit it, just get rid of it. So this jar looks fine as you can see the mycelium is grown right the way through all of the substrate. The brown and orange staining is perfectly normal, that's just how freckled chestnut grows, it lets out a load of metabolites, and that's normally a sign that the mushrooms are ready to fruit. So finally I place the mushrooms into fruiting conditions, putting them at a window at the back of my house where they'll get a little bit of fresh air exchange from the weep vents and the temperatures are stable between 15 degrees C and 18 degrees C. 
put plastic over the top of the jar just to keep the humidity levels high. I just kind of take a piece of plastic and pop it on top. No need to damage the plastic or anything like that. Totally reusable. And after a certain amount of time, you can see pins are starting to form. If you've got little droplets of water on the surface, as you can see in the top right here, then surface conditions are perfect. There's absolutely no need to be spraying these mushrooms with water. You don't need to actually spray substrate with water unless it's actually dried out, and this is definitely not drying out. So at this point, I just take the plastic hood off the top of the jaws and then just let the mushrooms fruit out of the top of the jaws. It's that simple. The main things that you've got to learn how to do is create grain spawn, which isn't contaminated, and do a proper pasteurization of the substrate. If you don't know how to create sterile grain spawn or pasteurize a substrate properly, I would advise watching one of these videos next.